In this tutorial we'll look at different options for formatting a score and the notes. Open the Bach Double Concerto in D minor for two violins. Here we have a score with two movements. The first thing we see on top is the title and a dotted blue rectangle around it. This is a vertical frame. The title and subtitle are both centered on top by default. Do a right click in the blank space within the frame and scroll down to add. We can see the things we can add. The different texts here have a default position within a frame. Everything that is anchored to a frame can be moved around. There are several places you can format different elements in the frame. Click on the blank space in the frame and you see some attributes in the inspector panel. All the numbers here are at zero except for the height. You can use the up and down arrow keys and move the space by 0.5. Here all the texts anchored to the frame would be affected. If you need to be more precise, you can type in a number manually. We can also click on each piece of text individually and change the attributes. Click on the title, the subtitle, composer name. At the default setting what we see in the inspector panel looks the same. We see color, horizontal and vertical offset. The only difference between them is the style. When we click on the name of a style, we see a list comes up. The place to set individual styles for this version of Muse score is under style and text. Text formatting is explained in another tutorial on text. When we create a new score using the icon on the top left, we'd enter a title, subtitle, etc. A vertical frame on top of the first page is automatically added with the height at 10 spaces. If we want more or less space on top, we can double click anywhere on the blue frame and move the square up or down. We can also change the height in the inspector panel. The vertical frame is only used as an anchor for different texts and can be set to zero so that it wouldn't take up space. And we'd be able to fit more lines on a page. Close this sample without saving. Go to zoom on top and set to two pages to see the first two on the screen. We see that there is a lot of blank space at the bottom of the first page. And the staff lines on the two pages are not aligned. Double click on the frame and drag the blue square up until the staff lines on the first two pages are aligned. Zoom back to 100%. The title on top looks oversized. Highlight it and shrink it with the text options at the bottom. Realign the title and subtitle with the pointer. When we're done, click on the texts in the center and make sure the horizontal offset in the inspector panel is zero so that they're exactly in the center. The next thing we will add is a cover page before page 1. First adjust the page numbers. Go to layout and page settings. Change the first page number to 0 so that the next page with the notes will be page 1. Next click over the top frame to select it. There are three ways to insert a frame. We can go to add on top and find the options for adding a frame. Or right click anywhere on the blank space to open the pop-up menu. The last place you find it is in frames and measures at the bottom of the palettes. This menu allows you to insert a frame above a measure but not at the end of a piece. Double click on the vertical frame icon on the left. For a cover, we can also use a text frame. It's better to use a vertical frame even if we're not adding a picture now. We may decide to put in one later. Next click on the new frame and insert a page break from breaks and spacers. The new frame is now on a separate page. The frame is used as an anchor for the text. No need to resize it to take up the whole page. We're going to enter a few headings. If we go to add end text, the text will be left justified at the default setting. Here we're going to center the text. The quickest way is to enter them as title or subtitle. Select title, enter the text. Turn off highlighting and drag the text about halfway down. Add title again and do the same.
add another title the same way. Let's add in a picture. Move the pointer over the frame and do a right click. We can double click on it and drag one of the square to resize it. Turn off highlighting. Zoom out to see the alignment on the page. Let's make the title bigger. Highlight it and change the font and font size. Realign the text on the page with the pointer. Select the text one by one and make sure the horizontal offset is at zero. Now that the text is centered, we can center the picture above the text. Do a backup. Another thing we might do with a vertical frame is to insert a graphic reference on top of specific measures to suggest the way the notes should be played. This is common with ornaments in a score. Here is a conductor score with all the instruments on it. Besides adding a cover page, we're not going to make more changes for now. On top of the score we see tabs for separate instruments parts already created. Click on the different instrument parts and we find something unexpected. The first tab has the cover page added in with the texts and picture the way we want. The separate parts have a frame added in and the rest are on the top of the first page. The changes we made to the full score didn't get updated in the parts. Try changing the first D in violin 2 to a C. We find that the violin 2 part also changed to a C. Change it back and the original goes back to a D. Now try inserting a measure break after measure 1. And, none of the other parts get updated. Ok, changing a note in the full score would automatically update in the corresponding part and vice versa. Page and line breaks are inserted separately meaning what we do to one don't get updated in the other. Flip back to the full score and undo the line break. Let's add a graphic reference in measure 4 of the violin 2 part. First, select violin 2 and save it as a separate Muse score file and don't touch the original. Under file we see two options for saving. One is save as and the other is save copy. When we use save as for the original score, it would save the score under a new name and the new file would display on the screen. Using save copy Muse score would create a new file but keep the original on the screen. We'll use save copy and use the default file name. Open the new file we just saved. We don't need a cover page for the violin 2 part. Select the frame on top and do a delete using shortcut keys. Everything anchored to the frame is gone in one step. Measure 4 has a trill over the E. We're going to notate it in full and put the suggested way of playing above the measure. Select measure 4 and do a copy. Click on the white space to deselect the measure. Move the trill slightly off to the side. Select the note. Turn notation input on and press the 30 second button. Press E and F on the keyboard a few times. The measure that was changed looks a bit wide. Turn notation input off. Do a right click over the measure and open measure properties. The layout stretch is at 1 or 100%. Shrink it to 0.6. Looks ok. Turn on the camera. Move the selection area over the measure and resize it to the right fit. Do a right click over the area and scroll down to save as print mode. Enter a file name for the image. Here we want the image to be black and white the way it is printed on paper so don't use screenshot mode. Turn the camera off. While the measure is highlighted, paste the original back. 
open measure properties and change the layout stretch back to 1. Select the first measure of the staff and insert a vertical frame above it. Right click over the frame and add the picture we just saved. Double click on it and shrink it down. Drag the image over measure 4. We can adjust the height of the frame to take up less space. Deselect the frame and do a backup. Next we'll look at inserting a horizontal frame. It is usually added to the left of a measure. You can also add it to the end of a piece using a pent horizontal frame with the pop-up menu. Let's insert a frame before the first measure and insert a clip art image. Double click on horizontal frame under palettes. We notice it has a width of 5. Here we can stretch the width or drop it down to 0 if there is enough room on the left margin for the picture. Insert the image the same way as a vertical frame. Resize the image and position it to where we want. Next select measure 9 and insert a horizontal frame. The frame is added on the left leaving a small space between the previous measure. This is useful for breaking two sections of music. The next section would start on the same line without doing a line or page break. Press undo. Try adding a frame before measure 11 which is the beginning of a line. Here a frame is added to the end of measure 10. MuseScore would insert a frame at the end of a line if there is enough space. If you want to have a frame before measure 11, you can select measure 10 and do a line break. Press undo. This piece has two movements in the same score. We are going to do a break at measure 88. It's easier to use the navigator. Turn it on under view. Drag the border above the navigator and make it bigger. Scroll across to the bottom of page 2. The second movement starts at the Largo Manon Tonto. Select the measure and put in a horizontal frame. Next put in a section break on measure 88. This works like a line break and reset the measure number for the next measure to 1. The frame would appear at the beginning of the next movement. Here the next movement happens to be on the next page. Scroll to it and we see an indentation before the first measure. Next insert a text frame to give more space between two movements. The start of the line has the horizontal frame. Select it and insert a text frame above it. Double click on the frame and put in some text. We can highlight the text and change the style using the text options below like any piece of text. Click outside to turn off text input. To move the text further to the right, we can select it and use the horizontal offset. We can also select the frame and change the left margin. Here we'll increase the bottom gap to give more space before the start of the movement. If you have two movements on the same page, it's better to leave more space between the end of one movement and the beginning of the next. A text frame in MuseScore is a redundant feature since a vertical frame also allows you to add text and space between staff lines. Suppose you want to enter a piece of text for reference at the bottom of a page, it's faster to insert it as staff text and drag it down. It take more keystrokes to insert a frame and make sure the bottom margin has enough room for it. Scroll to the bottom of page 1. Select a note and use the shortcut Ctrl T to activate text input. Enter the text and move it to where we want.
as long as the text is not too low off the page, we're OK. Close the Violin 2 file and save. Close the full score without saving. The next section will go into details on page formatting, stay tuned. Bye for now and thank you for watching.